Hi, it's Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez, and I'm so sorry that I am unable to be here in person, but thank you for allowing me to participate in this discussion in regards to what I consider one of the most vital issues facing the U.S. military, the full integration of women. As many of you know, I have, at times, been a lone voice on this issue, but I have always tried to be an extremely loud and strong voice on how women have become an integral part of the military. It is important to show why it's time for women to finally be able to join any military occupational specialty if they are willing and able to do so. Today, we have gathered to discuss where the services in the department are in the process as two dates approach quickly, October 2015 and January 2016. So in about six months, each department will have validated its gender neutral occupational standards and completed all of these studies. In less than 10 months, women will be integrated into what I hope will be all, let me say that again, all open positions and units. Leaders from all services have committed to this deadline and I'm going to do my part to ensure that these deadlines are met. However, it's not just about meeting these deadlines. Each service will have the opportunity to present a case for exceptions to this policy. And I believe it is our responsibility to make certain unnecessary exceptions are not accepted. You see, time and time again, female soldiers and Marines, sailors and air women have proven, gosh, all we've got to do is look at Iraq and Afghanistan, they've proven that they are just as capable as their male counterparts. And time and time again, service women have been placed in combat, but they've been denied the recognition. So we are standing at a critical point in this integration process. There is no time for the services to question whether or not we should be fully integrating women into all specialties. That question, that's been answered, and now it's time to act on it. I believe that it is a disservice to women in the military for any of the services to be dragging their feet in this process. And I know, I understand that many of you have concerns, especially with the Marine Corps and their integration plan. Well, I'm here to tell you I'm aware of these concerns and I will continue to push for answers in terms of their ground combat element integrated task force and their <clears throat> resistance to opening certain specialties. I'll also be focusing on urging the department to be more transparent on where we stand in terms of this process, along with working together to ensure that each service is doing its due diligence in educating and training its members in order to conduct a smooth implementation. You see, we can allow women to be in, we can have women there who want to be there, but if the men around them make it difficult, then we're not going to get the results that we need. So before I conclude, I want to thank Women in International Security and its Combat Integration Initiative, Alliance for National Defense, Reserve Officers Association, and no exceptions for organizing this discussion. And especially to express gratitude to Ellen Herring, Holly Hemphill, and Greg Jacob for all of your support these past couple of years on this issue. I look forward to continuing this work together and ensuring once and for all that women are provided the same opportunities as men in our United States military. Thank you for, once again, for allowing me to participate in this discussion and I wish you all a successful event.